Peace and blessings in this corner box of 24. Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning, pardon me. Get ready to be afternoon, but yes, good morning. How's everyone doing today? Hope everybody's doing well. I'm doing pretty good on this side. Can't complain as always, God is good. And God is definitely great. Um, just wanted to, you know, brief, just do a brief video, man, on um, Javon Booth's Enos, man, because, um, you know, I got a saying called, R it's called RWA, Ready, Willing, and Able. And um, that's Javon Enos, man. He's ready, willing, and able, man, to fight anybody. You know what I'm saying? Uh, while we waiting on this big announcement for Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence, we waiting. But in the interim, in the meantime, and before time, and after time, we waiting, you know, Javon is waiting for whoever else will step up step up up to the plate so that they could be on that co main event with him and he could shine for that fight. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't know what the future holds for uh, Earl Spence and, and Crawford as far as after the fight, whoever the winner is. We don't know if it's going to be a rematch clause. We don't know if they're going to move up to 154. That's a, that's, a, that's a high possibility. They might move up to 154 after that fight. Whoever the winner is, and even the loser, they might move up to 154. Okay, I'm not saying nobody's afraid of boots. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's that's a pop. That's a probability, a high probability because they both have said it. Vince has said he wants to move to 154, and Crawford has said that he wants to fight Jamel Charlo. Now, if he loses to Spence, which I doubt that he will, I'm sure Jamel Charlo will probably try to brush him off. But if he wins, which I believe he will, that's definitely a fight that can be made, okay? I think Jamel Charlo will definitely, you know, I don't know if he, I don't know how eager he would be for that fight, but I know Crawford will definitely be eager for that fight. And that's a fight that definitely can happen. Okay, so in the meantime, man, Boots is ready for Keith Thurman, Stanley Onis, Connor Ben. Even though Connor Ben, you got a fight set with Chris Eubank Jr., a middleweight. How does that happen? How you calling out a welterweight and you are a welterweight, but yet you're doing a catchweight fight with a middleweight. Like, how does that happen? So what does that mean? That means you really don't want to fight? And what are you trying to prove by fighting a bigger man, a naturally bigger man than you? That's, you know, a middleweight, you're a welterweight. I don't know how much you walk around as. I don't know how much he walk around as, but I'm sure he 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 outweighs you by some account, some some amount of pounds, okay. And, he, and even if you're all the same size, you're still a welterweight fighter on the books, and he's a middleweight. So why call out a welterweight like you want to fight, but then you're gonna go and sign a contract to fight a middleweight because of history, because your father and his father fought. Like that means you don't want to fight Conor Ben. So then don't call out Boutinas. Okay, don't even call out Keith Thurman or Stan Leonis for that for that uh, matter. You know what I'm saying? Because you really don't want to fight. Now, Keith Thurman, what you want to do, man? You talking about $10 million, man. Just cut it out, man. Do you want to fight Boots or not? Stan Leonis is probably the only one that I think will fight. His trainers and his handlers is probably saying, nah, you don't want to do that, man. This dude gonna put you out. He's gonna embarrass you. You know what I'm saying? You want your stock to rise. Let's let's try to stay away from him as, as much as possible, as long as possible. But he seemed like a dude that would I give him his price. He seemed like a dude that got the heart he would fight. But I don't know if that's in his best interest. Because he only got a few fights under his belt. You know, 14 fights, 15 fights for him to have a loss. Eh, I don't know. So they might not want to do that. And I get that. But Keith Thurman. Come on, man. You're an ex-champion. Step up to the plate. Another L is not going to kill you. A knockout will, which you probably will get knocked out. And I think that's what you're worried about. You're going to get embarrassed. You're going to get hurt. So I think that you feel like, you know what? I'm not doing that. Let me, let me, let me, let me, that's why I, let me put up a big number that I know I'm not going to get so that I can just avoid that fight. That's what you're doing, Keith Thurman. Okay? There's nobody else is there, really. Like 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 Bozy Enos said, uh, Jerron's father. You know they asked for Jamal James. They asked for 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 Stanley Onis. They asked for Thurman. 
I mean, and they're not going backwards. You know what I mean? So that's why Conor Ben is like, what? What the Conor Ben don't really have anything to offer, and I, honestly, Stan Lee Owens don't have anything to offer either. If you want to be real, the only one that really has something to offer is Keith Thurman because he he was an ex champion, and you know he has the experience. So beating him would definitely boost your resume. But really, these other guys don't have anything to offer. Now, Victor Ortiz is a is a depending on the division. He's a he's a one or two under boots as far as mandatory under Spence and Crawford. So he's like one and two with boots. So that's a fight that 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 could be made. And that's the fight that could happen because he's in the similar status as boots as far as going for a belt. Right. So that's a fight that definitely makes a lot of sense. That's the and, and they want that fight. Jerome wants that fight. His father wants that fight. So that fight could be made. Now, we know Ortiz, you know, had some back and forth or had a little comment that he made. He was asked about Crawford when he said, yeah, that's a, that, that's a fight that could be made. But he but he wasn't really wasn't confident about it. He was a little apprehensive. And Craw Crawford actually criticized or said some things about his performance and his weaknesses in his fight with Michael McKinson, how he was getting hit, how he was getting tagged and how he throws a lot of punches with bad intentions or most of his punches with bad intentions. He's not really setting it up with a, with a jab, with a hook. You know, he's just trying to go for the knockout. So that's a weakness because if you come in there with me or you come in there with Boots or you come in there with Spence, you might get laid out. So, but Ortiz was apprehensive about saying he wanted to fight Crawford. And then he said, I just answered the question because I was asked, which is the wrong answer. I would have never said that. You don't say I just answered the question. I just said your name because the fan asked me, no, do you want to fight or not? You're supposed to say, yeah, I want to fight. I want to fight the champion. So, and after seeing the interview with his father and Sergio Mora, I kind of realized that they really don't want that fight because Sergio Mora said that um, Victor Ortiz, he thinks he should build up his status he's a star in texas and there's no rush and his father said when the time comes he'll be ready for the fight so basically he said when the time comes but not right now when the time comes that that could be like okay if it's if it's tomorrow then we'll be ready but we know that's not really what that means he's saying in the future basically because if it was now he would say yeah we want that fight right now we, we'll fight him right now we could win right now they're not saying that but Boots is another story. He wants everybody right now. He said he's the best fighter in the world. Okay? They know how to beat Crawford. They know how to beat Spence. And I like Terrence Crawford. Okay? He's one of my favorites. And I got him beating Spence, but I know Boots will beat him. Okay? Based on my eyeball test. I don't care what nobody else is saying. All you people and even friends of mine that I'm going back and forth with. They, oh, you know, one of my friends says that Spence is going to beat uh, Terrence Crawford in 10. And I said, man, don't just make up a number to sound good, man. Let it be based on facts, all right? So when I talk about boots, I base it on what I see, the eyeball test. The speed, the explosiveness combined with the power, the IQ, the switching stance, the defense, the footwork. There's nobody going to beat him. There's nobody going to beat Boots, okay? And I feel like Spence would be easier for him because Spence is going to stand right in front of him. So he's going to hit him with that power jab. He's going to hit him with the overhand. He's going to hit him with that body and break him down. Spence could come forward, but he's not going to come forward with that full throttle like he did against Ugas because Ugas wasn't giving him nothing back. He's not going to come full force like he did with... with, with uh, with Mikey Garcia, because Mikey Garcia didn't give him nothing to be honest about. Sean Port is the only one that made him think and hesitate. And we know that Boots is definitely, from the beginning, is going to have him on his heels. He's going to have him going backwards, because he's going to land that jab, that power jab. He's going to land that body shot, and that uppercut, and that overhand. And Spence is not going to be able to land like that. Crawford a little bit different because Crawford going to move around a little bit. But Boots is going to get him too. Okay? He's going to out-jab him. 
You're going to outbox him. You're going to outmaneuver him. And he's going to switch stances on him. Okay? Same thing that he does, but more natural. Like as if that's, that's, that's his style from the beginning. Okay? So this is what we're looking at. And this is, you know, this is what we want to see, man. We just want to see the best fights. I want to see the best fights as a fan, as, 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 a, as a boxing fan, as a trainer myself, and as a person who loves boxing. Wish I could have been a boxer, but I'm here with a little bit of knowledge of it. And, man, we just want to see the best fights, man. I want to see the best fights. And those are the best fights to see, man. I'm grateful for the interview. I mean, I'm grateful for the picture that I got with, with Bozy and Jerron last two weeks ago at the Danny Garcia fight. I'm grateful for that. And I'm looking forward to meeting them and talking to them. And I wish them much success. But he's a one-of-a-kind fighter, okay? He's more, he's multidimensional. And fighters like him, like Mushin Kaysan said, and he sparred him, he's a cruiserweight. And he said, nobody's beating Boosh right now, okay? And he also said he's a fight for fighter that comes on every that comes around every decade he's that special he's like that fighter he's like that floyd mayweather that muhammad ali that sugar ray robinson they don't come up around but every so often and that's boots he's not a type of fighter that comes around every year every six months every two years no he's a fighter that comes around every decade every 20 years you know what i'm saying you see somebody like that and that's what we see man he's a special fighter man all right and so much love, much respect to him, to his father, his camp, his trainers, and the whole Philly. All right? Peace and blessings in this corner box of 24. Everybody enjoy the rest of your day. Be safe out there.